This is a session to learn about explicit subscripting system variables. These variables are underscore n and underscore capital N. They are very useful to create lag variables. So let's first start with sorting our data by individual ID and by date. Then let's create a variable that will be just the rank of observation. And I will use underscore small n to uh, create that variable. If I run this, I will get the rank of his or her observations. As you see here, the new variable was created here for each individual in the long format data. You can see that the rank of observation is indeed 1, 2, 3 here. For the next individual, it will also be 1, 2, 3. But for some other individuals here, it can go up to 6. Now, let's create the rank of the previous observation. Please note that we created it by subtracted 1 from the value of underscore n. Now you have a new variable and it will be coded 0 for the first observation because 1 minus 1 equals 0 and 1 for the second observation and 2 for the third observation. As you can see here, the previous observation rank is lag. The same could be done with the next observation. More interesting is to store the total number of observations. Here you have the total number of observations for the first individual. As you can see, many of these first individuals had the same number of observations. But when you look at this individual, he had only two observations. This one had six this other had seven, etc. So that's the use of underscore capital N. Now, what is interesting is to use these two system variables, underscore small n and underscore capital N, to actually refer to the value of a variable in subsequent observation or previous observations. This can be done using the squared brackets. So, for example, if I want the value of the previous observation event, I will take even code, which is the name of the variable for the event, and add this in square brackets, underscore small n minus 1. This will refer to the value of even code for the previous observation underscore n minus 1. Let's do that. Here now we have the previous event. So for example, the previous event for the first observation of the first individual doesn't exist because there is no previous observation to refer to. Remember that this computation is done per individual, not for the whole dataset, but separately for each individual. When we are on the first observation, the previous one doesn't exist, it is missing. And that's what we have here. On the second observation, the previous observation was enumeration, so we find it here. On the third observation, the previous observation was an alt migration, and we find it here. And then we go to the next individual. For some individuals, we have quite a number of observations. And so it, you see the lag value of event code, which is stored in the new variable previous event code. Also, you could create a new variable telling what is the last event for each individual. So let's look at this new variable and you can see that the last event is actually always an OBE, as it should be. Because in our datasets, all individuals should terminate with an OBE, which is the date of the last observation. You could also create a variable that identifies the first event that way. And then you see that for many it was enumeration, but for some people it was other events like an immigration, 
a birth, an immigration again. In our data set, there are only three events that can start observation. It is enumeration, in-migration, or birth. Thank you for your attention.